guys, Dr. Dobson. In this one, we're going to be installing a dental implant crown. Uh, here's the before and after. This is a patient that fractured off their lateral incisor to the gum line. Here's a pre-op photo. So we did an immediate implant surgery three months prior. That went well. Uh, I like to make a couple of different shades to check which one's closer. Here's an A35, and then here's like an A3. I think this one was closer, so we're going to go with this one. We haven't bonded the tie base yet, so that's what we're going to do next. I'm uh, going to rinse and dry the intaglio and then prime it with the ceramic primer, dry it, leave it for a bit, and then we'll bond our tie base. I use these little Orem tie bases from Des, and I'm cementing it using Panavia V5. Panavia SA also works. We'll, uh, we'll coat the tie base and then uh, place it in the uh, abutment cavity. Pump it up and down a little bit so that the cement is e evenly distributed. It only goes in one way. There's a notch so that it indexes the proper way that it's meant to. We'll tack cure the um, excess cement and then clean it up from the collar and then uh, give it a couple more shots with the Velo. And then we'll put in our fixation screw and we'll be ready to uh, install the uh, implant crown. But I think before we do that, I'm going to show a little bit of the uh, process of manufacturing. So uh, here we are the week after we took our scan. We're, uh, we're happy with the tissue. I, I did use a tissue level implant. Lots of people say you can't use tissue level in the anterior, but I beg to differ. So the, uh, the scan process, basically we get them in, we take a scan, we put in the scan flag, take another scan, take an opposing and a bite. I send that to my designer and then I mill out the product. Here's the mill on time lapse with some other cases. And then there's a final final product. It's a Argon STML multi-layer. And then I put some stain on it. So here we're gonna install the uh, the crown. It's an octagonal platform. It's a Strawman compatible uh, system. And there it goes. You you just saw it drop down into the into the platform. And we're gonna just finger tighten it with the driver here. You'll see the tissue blanching, which is normal. And then we'll begin torquing it down. I'll usually torque it down to 15 or 20 first. Torque it down there. No freezings required for these appointments. We tell the patient that they might feel a little bit of pressure. And then we'll, um, we'll adjust the torque wrench to 35 NCM spec and then finish torquing the, uh, the implant crown down fully. And then once it's installed, we'll check the contacts and we're happy with that. We'll check the bite. I typically leave my implant products slightly out of occlusion. There is some contact on this one and he said that it feels high, of course. So we'll, we'll whack it down a little bit with a fine diamond. Check again to make sure that the bite feels comfortable to the patient. And now we're going to backfill the screw channel. We'll dry it out, put some Teflon tape in, plug it in with a, a plugger and typically try to leave about three or four millimeters of space for the screw channel um, for the backfill material. So we'll snip and then plug it in firmly. And then we'll backfill the channel with just a flowable composite. This is actually temporary. We're going to go back in here and retorque after anywhere from two weeks to six weeks, eight weeks. I don't think there's really a hard and fast rule, but We'll overfill the screw channel with flowable and then Jackie's going to cure it. And then we're just going to take a large round diamond and trim it down flush. And that's pretty much going to be, going to be it. I think we made him a flipper in the meantime, uh, when we did the immediate surgery, which he, I don't think he used all that much, but he was, happy with the result here can't be perfect in the anterior but there's a final pa and then a before and after there so